Hello, second graders, and welcome to week seven, lesson 32. It's me, Miss B, and I will be your virtual teacher today. Let's go ahead and get started with today's lesson. As always, we're going to start today's lesson by reviewing high frequency words. Our first word is another. This word is another. Read with me, another. Read the word with me again, another. When you see this word, you will say another. What's this word, boys and girls? That's right, this word is another. Wave at me if you were able to read the word another correctly. Our next word is inside. This word is pronounced inside. Read with me, inside. Read the word with me again, inside. When you see this word, you will say inside. All right, boys and girls, your turn. What's this word? That's right, this word is inside. Give me a high five if you were able to read the word inside correctly. Next up is the word isn't. This word is isn't. Read with me, isn't. Read this word with me again, isn't. When you see this word, you will say isn't. All right, boys and girls, it's your turn again. What's this word? That's right, this word is isn't. Wave at me if you were able to read the word isn't correctly. Next, we are going to read the word pretty. This word is pretty. Read with me, pretty. Read the word with me again, pretty. When you see this word, you will say pretty. All right, it's your turn again. What's this word? Let me hear you loud and proud. That's right, this word is pretty. Give me a huge smile if you were able to read the word pretty correctly. Next is the word process. This word is process. Read with me, process. Read the word with me again, process. When you see this word, you will say process. All right, boys and girls, your turn again. What's this word? That's right, this word is process. Give me a fist bump if you were able to read the word process correctly. Shh. Next is the word similar. This word is pronounced similar. Read with me, similar. Read the word with me again, similar. When you see this word, you will say similar. All right, guys, it's your turn again. What's this word? That's right, this word is similar. Go ahead and give me a high five if you were able to read the word similar correctly. Next is the word usually. This word is usually. Read with me, usually. Read the word with me again, usually. When you see this word, you will say, usually. All right, superstars, your turn again. What's this word? That's right, this word is usually. Give me a big wave if you were able to read the word usually correctly. Next is the word your. This word is your. Read with me, your. Read the word with me again, your. When you see this word, you will say your. All right, superstars, your turn. What's this word? That's right, this word is your. Give me a huge smile if you were able to read the word your correctly. All right, superstars, now it's time for us to practice reading and writing words. For this activity, you'll need a sheet of paper and something to write with, like a pencil. Go ahead and pause this video to gather those supplies. I'll see you back here in a moment. All right, welcome back. Again, we're going to practice reading and writing words. Our first word is across. Go ahead and write the word across on your sheet of paper. 
While you're writing the word across, say the word aloud. Good job saying across. Now remember guys, across means on the other side. Our next word is America. Write the word America on your sheet of paper. Say the word America while you're writing. America is a short way of saying the United States of America. Our next word is could. Write could on a sheet of paper. Say the word could while you are writing. Could means something is possible. Our next word is entire. Write entire on your sheet of paper. Say the word entire while you're writing. Entire means the whole. Next is the word I've. Write I've on your sheet of paper. While you're writing, say the word I've out loud. I've is short for I have. Next up is the word once. Write once on your sheet of paper. Say once as you write. Once means one time. Our next word is they've. Write they've on your sheet of paper. While you're writing, say the word they've out loud. They've is short for they have. Our last word is weed. Write weed on your sheet of paper. Say the word weed out loud while you're writing. Weed is short for we would. All right, superstars, here are our opening learning targets. Please read along with me. I can tell what I learned from the text all about maps. Using evidence from the text, I can answer questions about the engagement text all about maps. Now is my turn to read for you. Please pay attention while I'm reading because I'll be asking some questions afterwards. Now it's time to read our engagement text all about maps. A map is a picture or a chart that shows the features of an area on Earth. Maps are important because they help us understand where a place is and what it's called. Maps also show us what surrounds a place, such as oceans, mountains, or deserts. A book full of maps is called an atlas. On a map of the United States of America, there are lines showing the boundaries between each state. There are also lines showing the boundaries between the countries above and below the United States, Canada and Mexico. Different colors are used on a map. Each state on a US map is usually a different color. Bodies of water, such as lakes and rivers, are blue. Usually, red lines show highways that run through the United States. If a reader is unsure of how to read a map, she or he can use the map key or legend to find out what different lines or colors represent. Each state in the United States has a state capital. These cities are usually represented on a map by a star. Other cities that are not the state capital are represented by a dot. Some cities or towns are too small to be shown on a big map of the United States though. Maps can help us identify the location and name of a place on earth, but that's not all. 
By showing us where to find a place and what surrounds it, maps help us understand the weather, the beauty, the dangers, and other important facts about a place too. All right, second graders, now it's time for our comprehension conversation to check your understanding of our engagement text all about maps. Here's our first question. What is the purpose of the text all about maps? Nice work. Here's our second question. What do you think a map key or a legend is? Okay, okay, I like the way you answered that. Here's our third question. What other types of information might a map give? Awesome job! Remember, if you had difficulty answering any of the questions, you can always rewind this video to go back to the text. All right, great job, let's move on. All right, superstars, now it's time to answer some vocabulary and language questions about our engagement text. What is an atlas? That's right, an atlas is a book of maps. Let's move on to our second question. According to the text, if a reader is unsure how to read a map, she or he can use the map key or legend to find out what different lines or colors represent. What does unsure mean? And what part of the word tells us it means not? That's absolutely correct. Unsure means something that you are not sure of. And yes, the un or un prefix tells us it means not. Awesome job, let's move on. All right, guys, please assist me in reading our work time learning target. I can read high frequency words that are a snap and play fair and words that are a trap and don't play fair. All right, superstars, now it's time to start our snap or trap activity. Please turn to page 144 in your distance learning packet. There you will find the snap or trap t-chart as well as today's words. Let's go ahead and read our words together. Across, America, could, entire, I've, once, they've, weed. Awesome job reading. All right, superstars, you know the drill. Using the words found on page 144 of your distance learning packet, go ahead and complete the snap or trap t-chart. You're going to record all of the words that are snap in the snap column, meaning they play fair or they sound exactly how they're spelled, and the words that are trap in the trap column, meaning they don't play fair and they're not always spelled exactly how they sound. So go ahead and get started. Pause the video to write and fill in on your snap or trap t-chart. And guys, I'll see you back here in just a moment. All right, second grade superstars, welcome back. Before I share my snap or trap t-chart, I just want to remind you, please do not stress out if your list is not identical to mine. Remember that these are our own opinions. So words that you might find to be a snap, I might say are a trap or vice versa. So if your list doesn't match mine, it's okay, all right? So. Without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my list. In the snap column, I wrote the words entire, I've, weed, and they. I find these words to be a snap, meaning they're spelled exactly how they're pronounced. They didn't give me any drama or difficulty when I was reading them. However, I have quite a few words on my trap column as well. These words are across, America, could, and once. Let me explain. So our very first word across has the schwa sound spelled with an A, which you hear in the first syllable, a, uh, and it's also a combination of two words, a, uh, cross, across, all right? The second word, America, it also has the schwa sound spelled with an A, a, uh, merica. So you hear it in two of the word syllables. 
I also would say this is a bit of a longer word because there are many syllables. America. Four syllables. All right. The next word, could, gave me a bit of drama because it has that silent L. And it has the vowel team OU, which make the uh sound. A little bit of a trap, especially with that silent L. And the biggest trap of them all is the word once. This word starts with the letter O, but the O makes a W sound. Once starts with a super, super, super trap. All right, guys, that's my list for today. Let's continue to move forward with today's lesson. Please assist me in reading our second set of work time learning targets. I can read and understand the decodable text all about math. Please turn to page 136 in your distance learning packet. There you will find the decodable all about math. Sam and dad have a map of America hanging in the living room. Sam asked dad, how many of the states on the map have you been to? Well, I haven't been to very many places, but I have been to Alabama. That is where your grandma was born. I also went to Florida when I was a kid and went to Kansas once. Sam says, I wonder if we can plan a trip to Alaska. Did you know the highest peak in America is in Alaska? I would love to see all the different animals there too, like a moose. Or it would be really fun to travel to Nevada. The Grand Canyon is there. We could hike to the bottom. Both of those ideas sound great, Sam. I've always wanted to go to Maine or Vermont. I would like to go in the fall to see the leaves change colors, says dad. I've got an idea, Sam says. Let's put stickers on our map of America. We'll choose one color for the states we have already seen and another color for the ones we want to visit. Great idea, says dad. He finds some shiny star stickers. They choose orange stars for the places they've been and purple stars for the places they want to go. Sam and dad look at the map. Um, Sam, I think we've covered the entire American map with stars. Yep, says Sam. I guess that means we better start planning our trip across America. Sam and Dad laugh. All right, guys, we're almost complete with today's lesson. But we have to do our activity for today, which is segment the syllables. Please turn to page 145 in your distance learning packet. There you will find the segment of syllables activity, which looks identical to the one pictured on the screen. Here are the directions for today. Read the words, then segment the syllables in each word by clapping the syllable parts of the word. So let's take the word cactus, for example. Cactus. Two syllables, so I clapped two times. Then at the bottom of page 145 and also on page 146, I will divide my word into the syllables. Now, before I let you go, let me teach you a trick. If you place your hand underneath your chin, the number of times that your hand moves or your chin moves your hand are the number of syllables in the word. So let's do this again. Put your hand underneath your chin. Let's take the word cactus, cactus. Notice my chin moved my hand two times, meaning that there are two syllables in the word. Let's use the example on our sheet. You see the word helpful below where it says syllables? Go ahead, place your hand underneath your chin and let's read the word helpful. Helpful, hmm, two syllables. And notice how I separate the word into its two syllable parts, help and then full. All right, guys, go ahead and complete the list of words. Oh, wait, I forgot to read the words. Come on and read those words with me that appear in the grid up top. Spoken. Monday. 
chicken, month, discover, garden, become, broken, above, happen, other, shove, comfort, nothing, even. Thanks for reminding me to read the words. All right, guys, go ahead and get started with today's activity. I'll see you back here in just a minute. Superstars, we did it. We've completed another lesson. Thank you so much for learning with me today, and I look forward to teaching you again soon. But before I leave you, I have two reminders. The first, remember to read 20 minutes today and complete a reading log entry. The second reminder, guys, remember to practice those high frequency words that are located in the front of your distance learning packet. It's been a pleasure. It's me, Ms. B, signing off. Have an awesome day.